Okay. What's happening, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of Live with Brian. And we got our beautiful co-hosts here with us again today. Miss Days, Miss Amber Days. Y'all been asking to get her back. And I was like, all right, cool. I might as well bring her back. And y'all was cutting up in these polls. I will say that. I launched a questionnaire and I was like, okay, well, she's about to be back on the next episode. What's going on? I see you purple. Uh I was like, well, she about to be back on the next episode. So, like, what do y'all, y'all want questions? You know, like, if y'all want to, y'all can ask us anything, blah, 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 because y'all just couldn't get enough of the last time. And uh, we've comprised a list of things that um, we're going to answer. Well, I mean, it's, it's really, it's more of these questions for her than it is for me. Yeah, you're going to answer them too, though. So, but I'm answering them too? Yeah. All right, cool. <laughs> but uh, other than that, for the first time, for all y'all that's up here for the first time, welcome to another episode of A and B Conversations. Is, is this how we're actually doing it now? I think so. Okay, so welcome to another <laughs> <laughs> welcome to the first actual episode of A and B Comics. What's up, Moonbeam? Welcome back to uh to well welcome to I'm getting ahead of myself. Welcome to hey. episode of A and B Conversations, and we finally here, y'all. We finally where we need to be, and I'm glad that she has chosen to continue and come back on the show with me. For y'all that don't know, this is my beautiful, beautiful woman, my beautiful, beautiful lady, Miss Amber Dot Days. Y'all can follow her on all social media platforms with Amber Dot Days D A Z E. And the only thing I ask of y'all to do before we get things started is there should be a meter way up there. If you click, click, click on the screen, just fill it up one time. And then for all the people that want that's new to it and want to see more episodes and stuff like that, even the first episode that she was on, go on my YouTube and subscribe. Coach Brian, get your fine. It's on all platforms. But let's get this show started. We got like 145 people up in here. Let's get these likes going. Let's get everything else going. We're about to ask these questions and bye y'all. So <laughs> the first question somebody asked was, do you poop in front of each other? <clears throat> well, it's a part of life. It, it is. And we are life partners. So, yes, <laughs> we do. What, do what the was, do in front of each other. Who was the first person? <laughs> I don't remember. I don't know. We were so comfortable <laughs> around each other. It didn't that take much. <laughs> it was just like, I think you might have been in the bathroom and I wanted to talk about something. So I just came in the bathroom. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and it's been like that ever since. Ever yeah. doggone since. The second question is, is it normal for girls to queef? <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> well, what 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 is a what, what is a queef? For all the people that don't know, what what is a queef? A queef is a vagina fart. <laughs> We're gonna say lady bits because I don't oh. I don't know how TikTok is with with, 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 We're gonna oh, stick with lady bits. It is a female parts <laughs> fart. <laughs> so instead of fart out the back, you fart through the front. front. Yeah, it's a fart through the front. And I think that is normal for women. So how, but how does because, it accumulate though? Well, I mean, you think about a regular fart. You know, there's two sides and uh-huh. they're together, uh-huh. and you know, the air pressure comes out, <laughs> and then the the cheeks like they just the cheeks. Yeah, it's, it's like mm-hmm. the cheeks vibrate kind of, and then it comes out. And then if you do it the reverse side, you know, there's flaps. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh well, yeah, I guess because that's really that's really <laughs> the other question, y'all, y'all. If y'all and that's another thing too. If y'all got questions, y'all want us to ask on the live because we could see y'all over there and everything. If y'all got questions, y'all want to ask on the live and y'all want to uh, talk to us about it and stuff like that. Just ask away. We gonna we gonna answer them. Well, I'm gonna wait for the thumbs up. Then we gonna answer. Uh, do you uh, do feelings fade with distance? No, I think if your feelings are real and genuine then they will not fade i mean i have a lot of friends that are not in the area well talking just about friendships Mm -hmm. but it's like i have a lot of friends that are not near me so whenever i do see them it's like it's almost just like memory lane like Mm -hmm. you remember and like all the feelings kind of rushing back even though you don't probably think about it every day Mm -hmm. it's like so no i don't think what, what was the question was Do it? feelings fade with distance? I don't think so. Now, what about in relationships? Um, I think it's the same. I mean, I've never been in a long distance mm. relationship, so I don't have the actual experience to say, but I feel as though it would be the same. If you're willing to, but a relationship is more than a friendship. Y'all, if, if y'all not talking every other day, if not every day, then there's an issue. Right, right. So, um, <laughs> I would just think it's 
I would I would hope it's the same. I think back to whenever we first started, um, when we first started dating, and I was going on tour before you started tagging along with us, and like how I'd be going for like a week at a time. Promise that when I when I did that tour run all the way to New York and back, I was going for like what seven eight days. Yeah, you was Some, going for a minute. I want to say it was nine days actually. Yeah, you was going for a minute. And then I came back. That was some of the best. Heated fellowship we ever had, by the way. My God. So I would say that it makes the heart grow fonder in a sense, but I wouldn't say distance creates problems and stuff like that. Yeah, I I don't think at least for the comments. I, I don't think at least with us, like distance wasn't like all it wasn't a problem. It wasn't a problem. Mm-hmm. Like we realized that we had to be apart. Yes. <laughs> and we were coming back together. So I mean I and we you. had communication very much. At throughout the, the whole process. So yeah. it's like, it wasn't that big of a deal. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, okay, B. I just realized B up in here. What's happening, B? For y'all that don't know, Becoming Blessing B is like one of my great, great, great friends. She is a She's just amazing. Y'all, please go follow her. She has every product you can think of when they come down to skincare and things of that nature. So y'all, please go check her out. And I'm also be answering the questions that y'all doing in here and on the pad, the ones that y'all asked already, just, you know, together or whatever. Um. Somebody said, oh, "B said we in here. We love me, uh, love me some y'all, and we love you." <laughs> Young Stunner said, "If you had a million dollars, a blue check mark, and status, would you marry her? Definitely. Shoot, like, he gonna marry me without it. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like uh, here's my here's the reason why I say definitely, and I'm not even saying it just because she right here. Like y'all, if y'all think that I'm talented and creative and smart and is that in the third she's really the like the future millionaire of this relationship i'm not saying we i'm not saying we both we not gonna we both not gonna get to that level on our separate journeys without doing our thing but like she's been on the content slash skills whatever you want to call it hiatus and stuff like that and for all y'all that went that's tuning in and y'all remember the last time y'all went check out her page you already know what she do you know but it's like i tell it is Time and time and time again, whenever she gets in these little ruts, and I'd be like, she has mil- like millions of dollars in her hand, like the things that she can create, the things that she does, you know, it's like, and she's a, I don't, I know we throw around this word a little bit too much these days, but she is literally the example of a high value woman. Oh, you know, <laughs> why you say it like that? Like I didn't know what you was about to say. <laughs> <laughs> but but I'm for real. It's like, and I'm not even like she, y'all, she know me. I'm not just gonna gas nobody just to gas them. I don't give like empty compliments. That's not me, even in relationships. And like she. She different, bro. Like I, I don't really date under me. If that, I don't even sound pompous when I say that. But like, <clears throat> and it, I don't. And you know me. Like I don't, I don't date under me. So it's like, and I don't like the whole what you bring to the table conversation. But if we're gonna use that analogy, we both like sitting down eating at the same table with big plates. So regardless of money, status, whatever, you know, like she, this mine. And I've been after her since we was kids anyway. So I'm not about to squander that because of fame. And that's, I don't mean, I don't mean that means nothing to me at the end of the day. That's but. what he said, but he always had a girlfriend. Wow. <laughs> you really about to do this? You, I mean, we could talk about it if you want to talk about it. Is that it. one of the questions? I didn't think so. So, so <laughs> she's saying that. And when you always was in a relationship, you was always in a relationship. You was always in a relationship, and then the times that I would be, but the times that I that I was actually single, you we had both. She was on the whole other side of the state, and I was on. I was still. You was like, I want to have two hours, like two hours away from where I lived at. So like, whenever we actually got a chance to like talk and me to actually holler at and stuff like that, that was like fresh, right when you graduated college. Well, no, the only reason why I say that is because you always say. That you always had a crush on me, but you always had a girlfriend, Man. and you never tried to talk but, to but me. But you, but you <laughs> first. No, I did. Oh, you stop. already, you already know what I'm about. Middle school. Man, look, look no, on. no. Uh, 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 that uh, uh, pitiful uh, uh. example. Okay, that's so a pitiful example. I'm gonna use another you example. Okay, use I'm gonna another. use another example. In general, this girl is not easy to capture. She has no social media. She's just got back on social media. She doesn't like. She's just a ghost. Like if you don't know her and you don't have her number like that, it's extremely hard to find this woman. And like the few times that we actually like met, I had a chance to like talk and stuff like that. I had like if one or two times to shoot my shot, and then it was like in between years. Mm-hmm. So that's my perspective. It's like, and why would I be after you if I'm in a relationship? You know, that's not how exactly. I roll. But, well, that's what I'm saying. But if you you see, never you never took a break to actually try me. When I did, when I was on a break, you wasn't nowhere to be found. Oh, okay. 
because we wasn't we didn't have the same classes i would see you in passing and when i was single we just wasn't even in the same vicinity and we didn't even have the same friend group we had like what if two people that we knew together yeah it was only a couple. Yeah. And I don't think I... To be honest with you, I didn't have the balls. I didn't have the balls to... uh, I don't know. I, I, didn't, I didn't have the balls to like really be able to come at you back then. And we wouldn't even match. Oh. We, no, I lied. We probably would have because we had this discussion recently. Mm-hmm. We would have matched. But you get what I'm saying. <laughs> don't be looking at me like that. Y'all, I'm a fighter. Which I don't know we'd be fighting What's behind the, the scenes. question? Nobody... Wait, hold up. He can't see. fight me. <laughs> Let me see. Somebody put... uh Oh, these comments coming in. I gotta scroll back up. Oh my god, okay. She loves that you can't find her. Facts, big facts. <laughs> like for real. That girl like being disappearing Houdini. Shoot, if you really want to find me, you gonna find me. I got you, and you ain't going nowhere. <laughs> Do girls have a higher sex drive on their period? Yes. It can't just be no yes. You gotta explain. <laughs> you gotta explain. I gotta elaborate. Give us a contrast. A contrast. Um, hormones be extra <laughs> high when you're on your period. They be mm-hmm. up and down, and you are looking to cuddle and be so- cuddle, huh? <laughs> just just cuddle. I was, you know, is my question okay? Let me answer. <laughs> you're looking to be cuddled and held, and you know when when a man holds you, you know things happen, and you know you get aroused. <laughs> <laughs> please, y'all, please don't don't even mind her. <laughs> B said, "Ooh, shorty, yes, boss chick, you got to know how to deal with it." Big facts. <laughs> yes, we do. It gets to be wild and crazy during that time. Hormones out of this world. Somebody say, "Oh, girl, yes." <laughs> I'm gonna give you that because you your little squad here. I see you got about four, five people. Your little squad here. Let me see. Uh, what? what you be you be annoyed if, when I'm. <laughs> What? Oh my period whenever What no not sexually no what no yes because I don't run red lights. Yeah, like you, like you annoying. I would I'll, <laughs> I'll put it to you this way. I wanna say a few things, but do I have the green light to kinda talk about certain things? Because she's real taboo about intimacy and stuff like that, you know, so I, I watch what I say on platforms, but in in person we talk a different type of way. I mean, if y'all both agree to it, more power to you. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> the reason why I get fresh is because I don't typically run red lights, if y'all get what I'm saying. So it's just, and she be she be just, Lord have mercy. She just be all over me sometimes. And I be like, you know we can't do nothing. We, I mean, we can, but I don't want to do that. You I know, respect so. it. I respect it. She res- I'm not even going to say what you be doing. I'm not even going to put you out like that. Let me get, hold up. Somebody put, uh, oh, look, I didn't think. In what ways does Brian make you feel safe? Okay, B with the good question. In what ways does he make me feel safe? I'm all ears for this one. <laughs> well, I don't really have a worry when I'm with him. It's like if something, because like. <laughs> what you, bro, bro, see, you be starting off good and then you say some off the wall stuff. What you about to say? You know. He's not the best driver, but you know. Oh my God, you drive worse than me. <laughs> Look, it's my question. Oh, boy. Oh <laughs> my God. She's throwing me underneath the bus today. But, but I still feel safe. I feel still feel like he, he is going to get us to wherever we have to be in a safe manner. Fast does not equal bad. Look, I will I like, say, I speed. <laughs> I like driving fast. But like my next car is going to be. Yeah, I'm gonna be flying. No, his next car needs to be a bulletproof car because what? <laughs> look, he be throwing some fire. What? I'm not. Look, I'm not even gonna put you out there like that. But I was gonna leave it at oh that. Oh my god, look, son, know, she really, you really coming for me you today? How, you know how everybody feels. <laughs> it's, it's not just me. My mama, my daddy, <laughs> all y'all could throw these hands. <laughs> all y'all could catch these hands because I drive better than all y'all put together. He thinks that. I know that. And your mama, too. But you know... Because you know how you, what your but, mom be saying about but me. in all of that, I feel safe. I know he's going to make the right decisions, even though it may feel a little bumpy sometimes. But, you know, he's going to make the right decisions. I need a different answer than that. <laughs> other than you feel as... No. How I make you feel safe other than that? Oh, other than other that? Other than that. Okay, okay, okay. Well... I just don't worry about things like big dog tanks. <laughs> I take care of the job and I get the job done. We continue. I know at the end of the day he has my best interests at heart and 
I don't have to worry about if there are other motives or anything in situations. So I always, for the most part, feel safe. Big Dog Tanks by Brian. <laughs> yes. Got a good question, BB. You, you trying to uh, start a fight up in here, though. <laughs> John said, love me for who I am. Big facts. How did y'all get over past experiences during the development of the relationship? Experience. I'm, I'm assuming they're talking about like other like relationships prior to ours. I got to answer, but I'll let you go first, ladies first, if you want to. Unless you want me to go first. Get over past experiences? Mm-hmm, that we've been through before we got with each other. I mean, I think before you even get in a relationship, you should try to work out those issues that you have in previous relationships or just make sure that your partner is aware that Mm -hmm. you're still going through certain emotions. (laughs) Because, I mean, it's normal to to be go through the motions Mm -hmm. of, like, past relationship trauma. Yeah. And... I don't know. I typically try, have tried to deal with my feelings and emotions before I get in another relationship. So I don't. I love that about you. So <laughs> I don't feel like I had a big issue when dealing with that. I think more issues went along the lines of just being in a healthy relationship and having to deal with how my mind was working at the time of realizing that I was in a healthy relationship Mm -hmm. and knowing how to deal with being in a healthy relationship. Because it's, I know it it may sound weird to how I'm saying it right now. It makes sense to me. But they agree. I mean, I'm seeing the comments people agreeing, so. But yeah, you know, I think that was more of thing dealing with the fact that I was in a healthy relationship and knowing how to push forward and not be toxic to my own relationship mm-hmm. and but I don't I wouldn't say it was it was it was and it wasn't due to past relationships because I don't think I brought in past relationship Mm-mm. issues Mm-mm. it was just I did <laughs> yeah <laughs> it was just me having to realize that I was in a healthy relationship and I wasn't in a toxic or loving situation mm-hmm. so so yeah that's my I'm the well I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say I I'm the opposite per se like to because I don't want it to sound like I wasn't like she came into the thank you for the, the roses Haley the gifts I see you but um I'm not I'm not gonna say that I was toxic or nothing in relationship at the beginning but I will say that I had to deal with a lot of insecurities coming because she caught me in transition of healing I had literally like I had gave up on dating I wasn't dating nobody else I went through like a very horrible relationship before that I see all the lights coming in. thank y'all for the likes. Um, I went through a horrible relationship. Like, uh, I'm talking about the worst relationship you could possibly go through. And I was like, I'm done. Like, I'm look, Haley say you back. See, I told you they'd be waiting on you. <laughs> um, Haley, you ain't missed too much. We just started. But um, like I it took me a while to like get battle my own insecurities and battle my own things because it's like in the beginning of the relationship, I kind of like stifled and like muffled my own feelings for the sake of the relationship, not realizing that I had to process that stuff. Like, and I knew I had to, but it was just like, we I didn't think we was at that point to where we knew how to communicate that properly because mm-hmm. you know how I get when I get in my feelings. Yeah. You know, so it's like, it just, took, it just took time for me to get over that baggage and get to the point to where it's like, okay, I'm in literally the ideal relationship. I need to deal with these things, especially as a man. Like, I need to deal with these things to where I can be as available for you as possible. Because if I don't do these things, and then what are, what are we really doing together? Like, we just wasting time at that point. But, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I'm not about to make it like a... Cause I, I know what I want to say, but I'm not about to make it like a who did what thing or, like, how to get where. Because then, oh, you bashing your exes and blah, 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 all that type of stuff. But I will say, like... And this is one example I'm using, then I'm a, uh, we're going to go to the next question. Remember when you first started popping on Instagram and you started posting and then, like, I'm talking about crazy amount of attention you was getting and then I went delete old dude comment? Mm-hmm. I think I still think that, about that. And that was a random. Thing. Yeah, I still think about that to the, like that was such an insecure moment. I was like, why would you like? Why would you do that? You know. And then like I, I check myself as much as I need to to make sure none of those things resurface. Or mm-hmm. I'm as confident in myself as I need to be to where I don't inhibit any type of growth we gotta have. And I know it was like quote unquote small in the grand scheme of things, but I wasn't. I, I'm just not about to 
just set us up. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm yeah. not about to do nothing that's going to inhibit our growth. But that's just me. Uh, Let me get to these other comments. Hold up. Somebody said they had a question for you. I know. I saw it. That's why I got, because uh, I ain't going to be able to do that from way over there. Let's see. No, my eyes not too good. <laughs> What about what about if you are introvert and you are attracted to emotional intelligence and you cannot find it? Are you okay with me going and feed them real quick while you answer this question? Hey, is that question for you or me? It's for both of us, but I'll answer Wait, whenever I get back. What was the question? What about if you are an introvert and you're attracted to emotional intelligence and you can't find it? Hmm. So like if you're somebody, if you're somebody, what she what she's so you're looking for somebody that's emotionally emotionally intelligent you just can't find it well i think the problem is when you're an introvert you don't typically start off conversations you don't like being in public you don't like so how do you find somebody on that level and it takes you stepping out of your comfort zone and um talking to people or whatever to you know whatever okay you can go okay yeah because i hear him crying i will puppies y'all i know i'm about to answer i'm i'm thinking (laughs) Well, you know, when it comes to being an introvert, or introvert, it's kind of hard because I'm an introvert. So it's like I wasn't on social media and stuff like that. But it depends on what level of introvert you are. Because for me, I, I could have conversations with people in public person type thing. Social media was just like, uh, for me. But... um. You kind of do have to step out of your comfort zone a little bit if you are, like, very much caged off, in a sense. <laughs> so it's like, you kind of got to put yourself a little bit out there, as comfortable as you can. And there are steps you can take to get to that level, but it's kind of hard to meet somebody if you're not at least putting, yourself putting out there. a step forward, mm-hmm. you know, unless you... Just have a good friend group that, you know... Where it brings in a lot of where people. Where it brings in mm-hmm. people, and you don't really have to go looking. So it's like, maybe that's a good setup. Maybe your friend know a friend, and, you know, make it easier. <laughs> a little privilege, don't you think? Well, <laughs> I mean... I mean, if it work, it work. If it work, you know, it yeah, work. I mean, yeah. you technically... I mean, we we've always known each other, but I I you got my through shit. my friend. I'm, yeah, exactly. To get to me, because how? Well, like, I'm trying to think. What I would have probably still been in the in the. I ain't gonna say the city, but I probably would have still been out there by the time you would have came back here. So we probably, and the type of lives that we live, I probably man, I don't even know when we would have crossed. Yeah. Maybe festival. Maybe. 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 <laughs> I don't know, but okay. I'm look. I'm glad we did because I shot my shot immediately, <laughs> immediately. But yeah, we have always been a different friend group, mm-hmm. so that's why I couldn't say nothing back in back in school. But we gonna but we left we left that alone. We left that alone. And B also said, and in what ways does she bring you peace, Brian? You know how good it feels to be a hardworking man that provides, that takes care of a household that has to train dogs, that has to take care of his family members, that has to stay in shape, that has to stay educated, that has to put a lot of weight on his shoulders. You know how good it feels to come back to somebody who doesn't nag, who doesn't disrespect me, who doesn't, who actually cares about what I have to, like prime example, I was super frustrated this past, that was Saturday. I want to say it was Saturday. I had, y'all had so much stuff I had to get ready for, for this week because I'm doing different content rollout and all that type of stuff. And plus I'm just in a, I feel like I'm in a stretch right now. I'm just going through a lot of stuff right now. But, you know, that's neither here or there. And it feels good to where, like, because she knows how I get when I'm in the modes. I just want to focus. I just want to work. I'm very annoyed. I'm very pissed off. I don't want to be dealt with. Don't touch me. Don't talk to me. No nothing. But she knows how to, she knows the inner workings of me. So it's like she knows little things to do to get to me, to talk to me, to take care of me and stuff like that. So she has my back emotionally. Uh, I'm not going to say nothing about the physicalities, but that's amazing. That is top tier. But um, yes, thank God, the best I've ever had. Um, I hope I hope all my exes are watching. Literally, the ah. best I've ever had. But anyways, <laughs> um, she, I mean, she's like I said before at the beginning, like she's like she's literally a high value woman, you know. So it's like it's hard to be upset, even when we go through our stuff as a couple. We don't stay mad at each other long. 
we don't we don't be disgruntled very long. It's like we have a very smooth system. We have a very like and I, we wasn't always like that, but the system we've developed, you know, is like we're exactly where we need to be and we deal with each other exactly how we need to to keep everything copacetic. So I mean, as as hard as it may be for me to be a young black man trying to establish like generational type of wealth. I mean, this is, I look forward to coming home. So, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you got a lot of dudes out there that hate coming home. They hate coming home. They hate dealing with their spouses. They hate all of that. I look, man, after I'm finished training my clients and I got stuff to do, what, what I'm doing my, if I'm not in my studio, what I'm doing my computer work at? Mommy. We, we do what together every day? Eat. Like, like, it, like <laughs> every little thing, like even whenever I'm working and like I need to break stuff like that is like, you know what I'm saying? It's just, I don't know, bro. It's hard to be mad with her. And that's just, that's just me. It's so hard to be mad with her. But when we all mad at each other, the house is on fire for like three hours. But then we back to where we need to be. When was the last time we <laughs> was mad at each other? Oh, it's been a while. Um, I don't know. I honestly can't remember. It's been that long. Like we haven't had like a real mad arg. Like it was some some petty stuff here and there, but yeah, it's been a minute. It has been a while. Ever since we got past <clears throat> that, you know what? Like I feel like the conversations and like the way we go about. You know, like us just dealing with each other sometimes is like mm -hmm. it just set the the tools that we need to move forward. I haven't been like legit mad at you in like almost a year. It's been a while. Yep. Might get on my nerves, <laughs> <laughs> but but like mad man, I I don't know. It's been I can't recall unless you could remember something. Nah. Uh, Most of our conversations is constructive. Very. <laughs> they may not be the most gentle of conversations because <laughs> we both blunt, but I mean it has to be said. B said the Aries. Yeah, it be like that, bro. I'm I'm passionate, bro. <laughs> I ain't about driving fast, but but about driving smart. Boss people need a boss partner. Reason why I got her. Wait, I had a question for you, Brian. Yeah, that's the one. What was what was the question, B? Unless I'm a, I'm gonna see whenever it gets down further at the bottom. It, it might it might have was that yeah, too. Yeah, maybe it was that. <laughs> Haley said, "Hey, she's back." Both seem to know exactly what they want. That's what's needed in a relationship for sure. Like. I'm a, I'm gonna say mine after, but I, I want to ask you this: hmm. What, when, and how did you comprise like you like like you what you wanted in a relationship? Hmm. <clears throat> what I wanted in a relationship? Yeah, because his his comment was both seem to know exactly what they want. Mm -hmm. That's what's needed in a relationship. So, what do you feel like got you to that point? Um, I mean, I don't think. In my mind, I wasn't asking for much. In my mind, I don't think I was asking for much. Because it's like what I wanted was somebody who could understand me, or at least try to understand me. Um, good communication. Um, one that's hardworking. You know, handsome. Me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I don't know, I don't think... I was asking for much for a relationship to work. And, I mean, <clears throat> once I saw that Brian was all these things and then some, it's like, then that's when you have to really, like, I guess, start the work. Cause what does that mean? Because, you, you, you know, a lot of people can get everything that they were wanting, like, mm -hmm. guess the basis, the foundation. Mm -hmm. But it takes a lot more of just the foundation. It takes the building blocks to actually fulfill and be in a happy relationship. Mm, I see so, what you're saying. Like, to make it, not even said to make it compatible, but like, okay, we got what we wanted, so how to have it, like, we, really fulfilled. Yeah, a fulfilling so, relationship. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, ooh, I ain't got no answer better than that. We're going to leave We're gonna leave on hers because, yeah, I just went through stuff and I learned about it. Yeah, she, see, see what I'm saying? Y'all see what I'm saying? Like, this is top tier. Top tier, high quality. You feels me? Uh, let's see. Jasmine said that's so beautiful. Thank you for sharing. John said the way she looks at him when she wait what? Yeah, I mean, he must have had a typo. Mm -hmm. The way she looks at you when she when you're talking. That's because that's my baby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, B says she loves this. She's in love. Oh, you in love? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Y'all, this ain't even half of how we be clowning, bro. Y'all, if y'all only was the new, <laughs> um, that's what I want. Ja or Ja, how you said this? Like, that's what I want. Mm -hmm. Uh, and B said, no need to recall that. You just answered. What's up, MK? MC MK said, what's up? What's happening, MK? 
um, how did you tell your significant other you don't like something they do without hurting their ego? Uh. <laughs> I mean, you could go first. I could go first. I mean, honestly and truly, we both have somewhat of an ego. I think Brian got a more of an ego than I me. Could, I could agree to that. But, you know... <laughs> It was a learning process. <laughs> yeah. Because we both blunt. We both used to, no, we both used to be like really blunt and like to the point where it's like We about to fight. You didn't trick you. Like, I know you did not just tell me that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but you know, we had to work on the way we said things. It's it's sometimes it's not about what you say, it's how you say it. Mm-hmm. This is true. And you know, there's certain words that's like, you know. That just going to be taken the wrong way, no matter how you say it. So you got to learn those things. You got to learn how to not say said words. And yeah, you know, like, sure. Ooh, child. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I agree. Because, like, um, what I, I got to word this the right way. The, the challenge that I had when we first started dating was, like, you know, I don't, I, I'm just a confrontational person sometimes. So it's like, and I don't like losing. Yes, so, I think that's it. Yeah, so it's, it's <laughs> like I'm just I'm just competitive. So and she's competitive. So it's mm-hmm. like even when we have no business jabbing at each other like that, just to get the last word or this mm-hmm. that is like or we, get the last point across. Yeah, like we gonna <laughs> we gonna throw some punches at each other. And I'm glad we like we got through that. We don't do that no more. You know, it's like we didn't got way better. Yeah, but it's like and sometimes you just gotta agree to disagree. That, that on part, certain things, that like, part, certain things is like okay, man. We just not seeing eye to eye mm-hmm. right now because certain things we didn't agree on, we definitely agree on now. But it just yeah, takes. Yeah, we do. But it takes. It's a learning yeah. curve. It really is. Like sometimes we just don't see it the same way. No, we don't. And you know, like towels. It takes. <laughs> <laughs> it takes another situation for you to be like, oh, oh, that's what they meant. Mm-hmm. Okay, I, I, I can, I can understand a little better now. Mm-hmm. It's just, man, you just got to be, if you, I don't, I feel like if you with somebody, you going to know how, your job is to figure out how that person works, mm-hmm. regardless of how compatible. Because, I mean, the quote unquote work didn't really start for us until like a year or something inside the relationship because yeah. we were so compatible from the beginning to where it's like, I'm dating my homie. You know, it's like, we I'm dating were, my best friend. You we know? were in a honeymoon stage for, for a while. A while. <laughs> we, still, we still in it. But, uh. <laughs> I don't, like, what is actually the honeymoon stage? I don't know. I feel as though people. People like they get so caught up in the beginning, like oh, it's so fresh. But it's like to me, it's like y'all just haven't dealt with each other yet. Yeah. So I, it's like I, a blind I, type of thing. That's what I feel like. The well, stage infatuation. Is like, yeah, it's the infatuation stage. Mm-hmm. Like, oh my god, they cannot do nothing wrong. Right. But I feel like <laughs> I don't know, like the fairy tale type type relationship. I'm not saying it's a it's a bad thing. It's just not something for me. But I I like the fact that we real with each other, even from the rip. Like we are very real with each other, and we know how to love each other through certain situations. Yeah, rather because than I mean, I don't understand. Like if you show me a relationship and they tell me they just <laughs> never had a disagreement on anything, I'm starting to question some things. Right? It's like what y'all doing? Or like what y'all personalities? Like you know, not saying they don't exist, but it's rare. It's that is very, that is extremely it's very rare. Very rare. Because I'm like. And it could be like, cause sometimes you're not gonna agree about small things, right? And they, and it could turn into a big problem. And it could turn into a big problem, but it's like having to go through the process of actually figuring out your partner and what sets them off and what doesn't set them off. Cause and you was trying. Oh, you was oh, trying. I was trying huh? Oh my! What God. I was trying. When was that? You was still living with your mama, and you was mm-hmm. like, "Yeah," because I haven't, I haven't seen Brian mad. I haven't seen him this, and you oh, kept, yeah, I have you it. kept pressing <laughs> I buttons, and I was like, "That's not a door you want to open." And then that door had finally Man, opened that's on you. You just kept, you kept saying things. I was like, "Okay, and, okay." And then that door got opened up, and we ain't never opened that that door again. Sometimes you gotta open the door to figure out that if you really want it open or not, you know. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that's, that's the door we not opening again. I, oh God. That, moving on. <laughs> God, boy, these questions are coming in. All right, give me a second, y'all. If y'all see me looking down in like this, like I'm just trying to scroll back up to the comments. Uh, oh, she don't have a name. What's her name? She don't have a name. Miss K. That girl said she's the one. I love her. Trust me, I know. I literally prayed for this woman. Trust me, I know going on four years 
Uh, and I'm gentle too. I'm like, is he too sensitive or no? Nah? I missed that whole conversation. No, for real. You <laughs> you really have to choose what you say carefully. Know what bothers them. That part. Mm-hmm. And it does. And, like, and once again, it doesn't mean walk on eggshells. It doesn't mean like you can't communicate with your partner. But what no. it does mean is that like you you know what tick that person off. So don't play like that. You know, and like just and it, find another way to come. That's the point. That's the whole point of growing. Finding other ways to like, okay, how can I communicate this or how can I express this without turning it into something that it shouldn't be? Yeah, because I think it's an issue when people can't take constructive criticism. Like, if you can't, like, I find that to be a big you issue. You think you're perfect. Like, and that's yeah. a problem. That is a problem. Somebody put, if y'all never disagree, somebody lying. See what I'm saying? So it's like if we never have a, a situation to like be constructive in a relationship or move forward, it's like, are you living another life that I don't even know about? Or are you per, or like, are you putting on a persona? Are you just a yes man, yes yeah. woman? You know, like it's it's so many layers to stuff like that. It is. Oh, uh, uh, Torin up in here. What's up, Torin? Hey. Boy, you finally got a chance to get up out the uh out the studio, huh? <laughs> <laughs> MK says somebody pretending that, and that's what it be. <laughs> um. Oh, this is this gonna be a very interesting question. Somebody put: Are girls attractive to guys that don't give a blank? I don't, I don't know if I can say that word and, and still, you know. Um, I think some girls are. I, I'm gonna say yeah to majority, but I'm gonna let you answer first because you a girl. I can't speak for women, but I'm gonna speak from what I know. I think it depends on the woman and maybe where she's at in her life because. I don't know. It's like, I think to actually fully, because some people be lying to themselves, but to be actually really attracted to people that don't give a... Or don't We're going to just say that don't care. Don't that care don't, about That you. don't care, then you don't care. Gotta be. And I feel like it's if it's that mutual energy, then yeah, I think that's an understanding. But... I don't know. I don't understand if if you do care and you're attracting people that don't care. It's like mm-hmm. I think it's a lack of understanding on your part, mm-hmm. and that's that's just my opinion. Because in the end, if you do care and you're dating somebody that don't care, you're always gonna end up hurt. It, exactly, and that's the part that be blowing my mind. Is like they expect these ain't blank dudes or ain't blank women to excuse me to act a certain type of way. Knowing that they're built like this, because like I, yeah. I always go back to like the oh, what well, they want a bad boy, this, that, and the third, and I feel like you want the, I mean, you want the spontaneity, you want the, the. But my thing is like, I think I believe there is a thing of matching energy, so it's like, yeah, but you don't have to go but, for the, somebody but, that's like that to do that. But you have to like, I don't think it's an understanding. It's like. You have to understand, like, when people show you who they are, believe them. That part. So, it's like, if somebody is showing you full out, they don't give a flying, and they just, like, do whatever they want, they say whatever they want, it's not an act. So, you trying to match their energy, it's an act for you. Right. So, it's still not going... And it's so detrimental. Even if you try to match their energy, it's still not a match, because they are showing you who they are, and you're showing them what you perceive them to be. Mm -hmm. And... Unless you actually like that, I w- I just wouldn't go for it. And and that's what and see and that's why I'm at with it because it's like I feel like there's multiple ways to get what you want without being a detriment to yourself in a relationship. Because I will say some people thrive off of toxicity. I will say that do. some people dwell in chaos. Some people do, but for most people that want a, a healthy, holistic type of relationship. I don't want to be at odds with you all the time. I don't. Yeah, who? Well, like, let's think about whenever you in your fifties. Let's just that's push tired. forward. Let's say you in your fifties. You're older. You're not as active or whatever. Whatever the whatever you you think fifty is for you. I don't want somebody that I I got to come back home to and it's always a problem or you don't care or is this that and the third. I don't want to come back home to somebody that okay. How was your day? You know what I'm saying? Like we get to we culling, we chilling, we having a good time. The kids out the house. We grown. You know what I'm saying? Like we didn't had our children all of that. Because at the end of the day, you're only gonna have you and your partner. So why would I want to be grow old with somebody who does not care about me or who is dismissive to me? Yeah. You know, it's like, are, like, are we living two different lives in the same house? Like, are you just my roommate at that point that I occasionally have sex with? Mm-hmm. You know, cause it's just, I don't know. It's just, I don't, I just, at the person that I am, I just can't understand that. It doesn't make sense to me. I mean, is it a situation I want to be in? No, but I do think if you are in such a situation, I think you should be honest with yourself. 
about the situation that you're in. Right. And, you know, move accordingly because I don't think you... The thing that I don't like or am sometimes just like, aw, about it's like, is when people are in these situations and they try to lie to themselves. Ooh. They like, they try like, oh, well... He's he's on the route to do to do this 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 and that and it's mm-hmm. like, <sighs> and I hate that a lot of that be stemming from trauma too. It stems from like broken homes sometimes, not having said parents in the house, trauma. Like it'd be a plethora of things, but it's like I still feel as though regardless of what the situation may be, it's our responsibility to not only heal and progress form- forward from stuff like that, mm-hmm. but to like just know that you deserve better. Why do you, why do you even feel like you deserve something I like mean, that? Like I said, I just think you just need to be honest with yourself. It's like, regardless of whether or not you think you deserve that or not, it's like, if you're choosing to stay for, like, let's say kids. Say y'all got kids together. Yikes. And y'all choosing to be together for the kids' sake. You know, that's 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 a whole nother thing. So it's like, but in that same breath, it's like, you have to be honest with yourself and know that y'all staying together for the, for the kids. Right. Y'all not right. staying together because... For the relationship. F- for the relationship. But even then, that got to come to an end because what happens when the kids grow older? I you know mean, what I'm saying? It's like, now you said... But then you got some people that do that to death. Like, yes. well, I don't want my kids to see divorce. It's like, no, nah, your kids some, need to see the truth. Some people do. I mean, people have different morals. People have different ways they want to be viewed. So it's like, it really depends on that person. It does. But I mean, as long as you're honest with yourself, I think that is a way to be... Just a little bit happier. Right. I think. <laughs> the beautiful words of Amber Days, sponsored by Coach Brian Get You Fine. I, oh, got, I, I got paid to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Technically. <laughs> Let me see. Somebody said, I got to scroll back up. Uh, where do you draw the line when it comes to changing for your partner? Oh, that's interesting. And how much is too much? Hmm. I think. Too much is when you can't even notice yourself anymore. Mm -hmm. Like, it's one thing to change, like, maybe the way... I don't even know. I I I would say this. I don't... Me personally, I feel as though changing for somebody is unhealthy. But pushing and bettering yourself... For the sake of a relationship and not for the sake of the person, if that makes sense, is the healthier route to go about it. Because if I'm changing just for you, yeah. I'm appeasing to you. But if I'm changing to be a better form of myself, to be more compatible with you, that's a whole nother thing. Because what if me changing for you means that I have to grow in a certain toxicity to match you or mm-hmm. to be compatible with you as opposed to what well, I'm going to change because I should change. Because mm-hmm. I need to deal with these things, and that's going to help the relationship as opposed to why I'm doing it for you. That makes sense. And I, I feel as though whenever you're changing for somebody, it's always a red light. But yeah. it's but it's like, but when you're changing for yourself and for the benefit of the relationship, you can't go wrong with that. Because like one of the things that I had to check myself on when we first started dating was being somebody that I'm not because I thought you wanted a certain type of person, mm-hmm. and it wasn't a lot that I would do it, but I'll find myself in these non me situations. I was like. Well, if she don't like me for me, then what? I, no matter how much I like you, what am I doing? And then even you notice whenever I change, like, well, you don't act like you. Like, what's happening? And you was like, and then ironically, when I did change, I prefer you this way because I was. You was like, oh, you doing too much. I don't like that. What, what you got going on? You know, but like me trying to be Mister, you know, whatever. And it was just, and you already know who I was mentally in combat with in the back of my head. Macho, macho. Yeah, <laughs> so it was, it was just, you know, letting your insecurities lead at the end of the day. But I'm at a point now to where it's like, like. Be in competition with who for why. And if we're not going to do stuff that's going to be, that's going to push us forward, then what are we changing for? Yeah. Because it gets to a point to where it's like your relationship only goes as far as you work on yourself. Because mm-hmm. honestly, compatibility is how harmonious of a person can I be with you. But that also inquires that whatever's thrown off my spirit, I need to deal with that. Because I can't be like, oh, well, say to be more compatible with you, I need, and this is only for example, say that I, I need to be more emotionally available and listen to you, but I'm selfish. And all I care about is me. I could care less about your feelings when you're mad, but you should care about me whenever I'm mad. That's a problem. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but like, but I, but I know I need to work on myself in order for us to make, to be that more compatible rather than, oh, I'm doing that for her. If that makes sense. Yeah. I think, you know, 
as people were constantly changing. As so we should. So it's like, I think people know specifically when you're doing certain things because you're trying to just please your partner. Mm-hmm. And I think those are the things where you have to start to question, okay, how am I going to feel once I make this change? Or how do I feel in doing this thing? Like, Because, I mean, you're going to change within your relationship. Mm-hmm. You're going to change together. So it's like, but if you're doing all the change and the other person isn't, Ooh, I think that's, I think that's a red flag Mm -hmm. because I think it's normal to change in a relationship and to change separately as well as together. Right. I mean, if we're going to be in a relationship, that's what a relationship is. The journey, uh, literally living the rest of your life with somebody else. But that person has to evolve as a person. So if you're not doing what you got to do to evolve with that or within yourself, what are we doing? Yeah. Might as well just be single. Might as well. That's why we work. We in tune. Y'all see that? Ain't none of this was scripted. This is, this ain't none of this rehearsed. It's all off the dome. Let me see. Somebody put uh, matching energy in what way? Why match energy and you get your energy out of shape? To me. Yeah, we already talked about that. They probably commented when we were talking about the other yeah. stuff. John said, when is the wedding? Preferably within a year, year and a half. Because look, oh. ain't nobody trying to be in a relationship for five, six, seven years. I don't ain't like... Ain't nothing wrong with that. If, that, if that's your cup of tea. It's not my thing. If that's your cup of tea. It's not my you thing. You know, some people stay together for 10 years and they get married. You know, that's that's some people. Some and people like that. Mm-mm. Somebody said, "I believe once you start playing dirty and matching energy, don't be surprised when you stink too." <laughs> but that's facts, though, because it's like you become you become such a like a, a the opposite of what you probably supposed to be. Like you pick on because because you got to ask yourself, well, what am I what am I even pulling these outside influences from to so say match? Because like like what like where's that even coming from? If it's not if I can't already produce that, or if it's not a in an area for me to fix or grow. Where am I pulling that from? Because it's not coming from within me. Because I feel like everything that we need to do in order to grow better, you have the potential, which means it's already inside of you. You can't, I can't try to my hardest to be a cat and I don't have the DNA or the, the, the genetic potential to be a cat. Maybe you like to meow a whole lot. But what I am saying <laughs> is that <laughs> I have the potential to be a better man. So I'm going to be a better man. You goofy. <laughs> Uh wait, God, I gotta scroll back up. I didn't lost the dog on uh, comment. Uh, once you start to act like the other person, trying to get back, it backfires for sure. If your essence is not like that, it's unnatural, and your body so will tell you exactly. John Claxton, stay stay, uh, stay tuned, stay in tune for the podcast. And look, even if y'all gotta go, or what well, I'm not gonna say, y'all better stay up in here. But if y'all want to <laughs> see, the, but if y'all want to see the other episodes, the the first episode she was on, go to my YouTube. I'm pushing everything to my YouTube, y'all. Kanisha says snaps fingers. That means she is she agrees. She agrees. Mm-hmm. Facts. This is so true. One is reactive and the other is pro- proactive. Exactly. Somebody said, knock, knock, Jesus Christ knocking at the door of your heart. And he got a key. What he knocking <laughs> for? Ben had a key. Confused. Oh, Lord. What you knocking for? Just Wait, come in the house. But he got a key, so he was always invited. He must have forgot his key so much. That's what it is. <laughs> That's what I'm on right now, doing the work. I hadn't seen it that way, changing for the betterment slash compatibility of the relationship. I take the betterment part back. Compatibility, I meant. What's more important to y'all, liking or loving your partner? Got to pick one. Oh, I, you're, I'm going to let you answer because you already know my answer for that. I would definitely say loving that part. your partner because there are going to be days where you don't like your partner. Like Yeah. <laughs> or, and hopefully it's not days. There's going to be moments where you don't like your partner. But, you know, at the end of the day, the love is going to carry you through that dislike and to the next part where it's like, oh, yeah, I really like him. Mm. I really love him. <laughs> you got to remember sometimes. <laughs> yeah, you got to remember sometimes. You know, there's going to be a few moments where it's like, why he did that? <laughs> what you thinking about? I'm seeing your face. What are you thinking about? <laughs> I bet you it's something small, too. It's a household thing. Look, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a household thing. <laughs> Y'all, she be getting on me for like little. What? No. The, the most recent one. The most recent one, I could tell you. You what, know, what, you know what, it was, what it was. You stepped in dog food and then you kept walking through the house. I said, walk, I didn't walk no, back the other way. No. And then he was like, I'm already here. I was like, that's not the point. Okay, wait, y'all, because that's about that makes me sound so dirty. And it's not what y'all think it is. He was he was he was duck walking. So technically the pool was not on the part that he was walking on, but still, he could have still just walked back the other way. And y'all don't know how our house is set up. 
I didn't even realize it was like that till halfway to the other side of the house. Exactly. Halfway. When you realize so you could have walked back the other way that you had not walked on yet. And I was already <laughs> in the motion of going. You, I, you are not a speed rabbit. You could have stopped. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't track any poo inside of the house. I didn't track any inside of the house, and it was in this dog poo. And then it no. What it, it was, was dog. It was dog or cat poo. And it, it wasn't. Was and, and my dogs are potty trained. They didn't use the bathroom in the house. We had just finished coming from outside. They had, they was doing their thing, so I had to go get them. But um, I didn't even realize it. And I was like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna just get to the to the front part because I started putting my running shoes in the front of the house anyway on the porch. So I was like, cause then what y'all don't know is. I would have to leave my shoes in the back part of the house or to come back and get them. That's like one exactly. half is fenced you know, off, and, and another half what? is and not, what, and I would have to walk all the way what, around. Y'all, y'all know who have done that before? Me. I have done that before because I, oh, I did not want to put track poo into the house. So you want me to do it because you did it. No, I want you to do it because it's the better thing to do. <laughs> what makes it the better thing to do? Because you don't have the possibility of putting poo in the house. It's already outside. Is it a possibility when I know what I'm going to do is not going to put you poo in the know. house? That poo could have fell from your shoe. I was very... Nah, with the way I was walking. And plus it was like dry dish. It wasn't like no wet poo or so nothing like that. So therefore if it's dry, it could have flaked It off. was already in the middle of the... We're not about nope. to do this. <laughs> <laughs> it was... I had a plan. I had a for sure plan. Your plan should have been to take off them shoes and carry them through the house. We didn't get poop. <laughs> See, but I, no, oh, so I could, but I could have did and that. You no, you took them off. What's the difference? I wasn't walking on the thing. You don't know that. <laughs> See what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? <laughs> Somebody put uh, what's y'all zodiac sign? I'm an Aries. I'm a Pisces. Nah, we have. From what I know, based off of what my friend Jazz said, the best worst charts to be together. Like we we fit like a very small percentile of the two signs that actually should not be together but, but it works, <laughs> it works. as y'all can see it works uh somebody else had put i lost my train where was that yeah we already talked about that how long <laughs> how long, how long until you can fart in front of your partner the first day yeah i didn't care i bro look we, i didn't care at all we was farting it up it was natural i'm a, it's what a part I, of life what am i to hold in the fart it. for like y'all see, that I already got painful. an irritable. I got an irritable <laughs> stomach, so if I hold in any type of gas, I'm gonna be in a in a, a fetal position for like hours. There's no no, I so I gotta wait years to fart in front. So I'm supposed to run outside the house and, <laughs> and fart and then come back. It's gonna no. I child. don't know. We was just we was real comfortable. I remember like my mama was just like, y'all fart in front of each other. Your oh mama still. Your mama. I don't. I don't want to say a bad word because I don't want it to associate with a bad word. But I'm trying to find a word for some like because I want to say bougie. But I know it could come off a certain type of way. I would say she's finicky. I guess. Yeah, like her mom is like super old school. She don't do nothing. She said fart. Yeah, How like dare. like Amber. embarrassing or non lady like in front of a guy. Like she's not doing it. <laughs> she will go across the city to let one out. Like it's crazy, bro. But I don't think I've never, ever, ever heard your mama fart before. I have. And I was in your... <laughs> <laughs> well, she'll do it in front of y'all, but not in front of us. Yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> I, I love you, Miss Swan. I love you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's see. Um, does it matter if a guy is hairy? Nah. I'm, I like hair. I, I, I'm, I'm hairy, but I'm not hairy. You hairy. Not, no, like... I my, mean, I'm pretty sure that's hairier people, but I mean... Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I am kind of hairy, though. <laughs> I be I be shaving from time to time because it be it be getting on my nerves, but you know it, it is it happens for a reason. I like hair. Oh, this is the question. I now see this the question I'm about to ask is what the other one y'all was talking about on my out, and I wish she was up in here. I forgot her name, but I know she's not up in here. She went off about this one, so I would love to see what y'all think, and I'm about to see what she, how she feel about this. Even though I kind of already have an idea about it. Um, the question is, do girls care care about guys' body counts? No. I mean, for the most part, I don't think so. Why not? I don't... I mean, I don't think it's a big issue. Unless it's, like, some crazy astronomical number. Like, you so out there that... Right. I know, like... I know you before I even know you. Like, I know you before... Yeah, like, (laughs) that's when it gets, like, I guess, an issue. Mm -hmm. But I don't think it's that big of a deal. Honestly, I I feel as though I, when I agree with that, but I feel like it's hypocritical on the guy's part because women don't care, but guys do. And I and I get why, because primitively and instinctually, yeah, in the sense you're right, what she was talking about. But in that same token, even outside of that, 
I feel as though it's to, it's each his own thing because if you're coming into this relationship, let's say we both had extremely high body counts mm-hmm. and we came into this relationship, but we didn't bring no STDs, we didn't bring nothing else crazy, and mm-hmm. we both took the time to spiritually heal from those people and they are no longer a part of us, mm-hmm. but we still find ourselves in a relationship and we care for that. Like, does it even matter in a sense? Cause, and what if somebody's and lying? Because people be lying about that stuff too. Do. Oh, I never people said well, blah, blah, blah. And you wouldn't know in, in like people in the streets going hard. I think as long as you have done the work to actually heal yourself and know yourself and all those things, it's like, I don't understand why a body count would be a big deal. Like, if that's, if that's you, then that's you. Then you know... There's people out there that feel the same, you know, mm-hmm. you'll find your people. But me personally, I don't think it's a big deal. Mm-hmm. I think it is over exaggerated. And I think, you know, you can miss out on a lot of good people by judging them. That part. <laughs> so because you don't know what people had to go through just to get to like where they are now. Like some people high body counts aren't even a result of them being promiscuous. Like some people, they only know a sense of, I guess, affection or like, you know, like some type of comfort sexually, you know? So it's like to, to shame that person or to like, Oh, I can't get with you because you got a high body count, but that person is everything you would literally need in a partner. Mm -hmm. It's stupid to me. I think it's look, I, I personally think it's stupid, but I also feel as though, Maybe it has something that some people just can't get over. Yeah. And, you know, I'm not here to change nobody. All right, same. Look, so y'all live like, your life how y'all want to live your life. So it's <laughs> like, if that's you and that's how you jam, you know, you jam that way. <laughs> you jam. <laughs> Kai number two. <laughs> I'm just not jamming I'm just not, it's just not my thing. <laughs> Somebody said, uh, let's see. Oh, they going back. Oh, what's up, Shar? I just realized you're in the building. What's up? What's up, Shar? How you doing? Uh, somebody said, Harry is good, looks manly and healthy. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> it's only an issue when you call yourself caring about it. Uphold yourself to the same standards. We're talking about the body count. Mm-hmm. Somebody said, well, Shara said, I would say body count uh, doesn't matter unless his comes with a bunch of kids that I'm not ready for. And as long as you're being tested regularly. That part, yeah. too. <laughs> because you can't be out here wilding in these streets and you spreading STDs and stuff like that. And you unaware. Be responsible. Because even whenever, like, granted, I was... I was single for a while, but not too, too long before we started dating. But even then, it's like, I would, I would still get tested. Yes, yeah, Peter. I would, uh, oh, that's okay. I'm like, I'm gonna call him later. okay. I would, I would still get tested because it's like, even though, you know, you use safe, yeah, use protection and stuff like that. It's still, it's still like, you don't want to even possibly, I don't know. It's just me. I don't, I don't like, if I knew I had something, I would be way less inclined to like be sexually active in these streets. Cause why you would, you would think most people are like that, but I mean, that's sad. I mean, bro. you going around killing people. STDs that's sad. Look, all they're there for a reason. Cause people don't care. That's bro. That's sad. <laughs> I mean, that's sad. I don't think people, and I also don't think people understand. Honestly, and true, I don't think sex ed is so common anymore that people really mm-hmm. understand the the drasticness of when you are unprotected mm-hmm. <laughs> and the possibilities that come with that because even on top of that we're talking kids like she it. said kids and this, you know, that's, that's it's, a it's lot. not just the, it's not just kids i think that's what people get drawn by the kid aspect well i didn't get pregnant no but you got something else that could hurt you from getting pregnant right so it's like right or that to where you can't even live to get to get pregnant all, there are actually you know, and this is teachers on there. There, there could be actually worse things than having kids. <laughs> <laughs> don't go into that rabbit. Right, not on this episode. It's for another episode. <laughs> Somebody put, "Why don't relationships last after a baby?" Ooh, and then, and then they just keep going as far as like having baby after baby after baby. Wait, what about babies? I'm sorry. The first part of the question was, "Why don't relationships last after a baby?" No, I ain't got a baby yet, so I don't know. I got an answer. I'm going to say it. Why don't relationships last after the baby? Be- because it was never a relationship. Ooh. And so I feel like people <laughs> use kids to try to keep people around. Because you already know how some people in my family, see, like... I wasn't thinking about it like that. Yeah, I'm, th- I'm going back to, like, per- like people I know personally who's been on the bad end of, quote-unquote, well, the, the, the cause and the effect. I've been on... Mm. I, I have people in my family that's been on both sides. And it's like... It just, to me, it makes it even worse 
Because it's like, if y'all not compatible and you just out of here, yeah. you th- using a baby to keep somebody? I think there was a lot of hidden signals that you missed, honestly. Right. Like, and, you know, I, I would find it a lot harder. Like, how long of a relationship are we talking? Like, how many years were they together? Like, if they really did not fully learn each other and, like, let's say a three-year time span mm-hmm. and then they had a kid and then, like, something was just missed. I'm like, mm-hmm. that's the confusing part. But you know what? That makes me think about this, too. I feel like people think they know what children are like or what raising kids is this like. This is true. And then you have a child when you're in a relationship and, and then that changes. Right, and then that drives <laughs> you apart. Because, like, I know for us, like, we're conscious about, like, we don't want no kids right now. Yes. We're not, we don't, because, like, I know for us, we like to travel. Mm-hmm. We like to be by, be alone. We like to, like, have our, per- even from the dogs, it's like, mm-hmm. okay, y'all go to do, please. Yes. You know, like, we're going to, we we about to do our own thing. You know, so it's like, I can only imagine what would, what would, what would it be like for somebody who has a child with somebody and they wasn't on that level of communication or in that same headspace to raise a child yeah. or to try to take the understand the time to understand how to raise a child and then the child is here and then next thing you know it drove them apart. I think it's I think it's really hard to prepare for a child, but it's like if you are thinking about having kids, I suggest you go by somebody who does have kids and start yep start babysitting start babysitting. Yep. Start seeing what it actually is to have kids. Because, of course, every kid is not going to be the same. But guess what? There's, there's going to be a lot of similarities, mm-hmm. especially in the, the beginning process. Mm-hmm. Like, so. But I feel like that also ties into one or two things. Because I'm thinking about, one, as far as, like, people not being prepared mm-hmm. are agreeing. Because you got to be in agreement to have a child. Very like in in a hundred percent agree, like we're going to have this child, we're going to raise this child, no matter what. Yes, because you can't predict what's going to happen with a child, but also it's some parts of it are fickle because oh well, she had a child and her body just did that in the third, and it's like how stupid can you be? It's like for nine months I mean, she's recreating, like literally her physiology is changing to create a, a but being. But you also got another person that you with too, like. But but that's what I'm getting at. It's it's, it's too full because it's like. Well, well, we could add that. Like, it could be another thing is like, know who you're having a baby with, actually agree and be ready to or, or accept the challenges mm-hmm. that come with raising a child, and then be a, and be realistic. Of course, her body's not going to be the same. But I think there, yes. But I also think there are some people that don't think that way. I think there are some people that are like, yeah, my woman got to be tip top shape, and you know, even if she have the baby, she got to be conscious and aware of her body. And, you know, I oh, think, <laughs> <laughs> I think, like, if you're dating somebody like that, you are kind of aware of how they feel towards these things. Mm-hmm. So it's so like have a child to have the chance of taking a child and knowing that, you know, I just think there are there are things you got to know in your partner. Mm-hmm. That And I will also say this, too. You can't predict the unpredictable. You can't predict Some the people are really good at hiding a lot of that stuff. And just some things just drive people this apart. This is true. Some but, people do change. But I will say this, though. Mm-hmm. At least have majority of the boxes checked off. Majority. Because, majority. like, because, you know, you know we, don't, we don't live in a perfect reality. It's not a utopia or nothing like that. And there's, a, like I said, like we said before, there's a lot of factors that come. Because, like, prime example, people like us, I feel as though we don't need as big of a support system as most people would when raising kids, but we're going to utilize our support system. And yeah. some people, they literally, like, I don't want none of y'all dealing with my children. And some people, it's like, I don't know how to raise a child. I don't care to raise a child this type of way. And I dump them off. I mean, I, for me, I just want to be in a position where it's like, I don't have to depend on other people. Right. Because it's like... You don't know what people are going through in their life. You don't know. And, like, a child, everybody, most people take it as a blessing. Mm-hmm. And most people are going to help you out, your family, and, and all this good stuff. But what I have learned is that family will do the most. And even when they don't want to do it, they still do it. But I don't think, for me personally, I don't think think that should should be a legit reason. Right. That's not their child. Yeah, because that's not their child. So I would just prefer to be in a position where it's like I don't need as much help. It is very much, oh, you want the child. I don't need you to take the child. Mm-hmm. You know, I just prefer that aspect. Right. No, I, I, I 100% agree. 100% agree. And I, I, I know the comments rolling on this topic. Let me check it. Somebody put a... Uh, 
I gotta scroll back up. Uh, yeah, a lot of comments came through. Uh, I feel like having a kid challenges you and brings traits out of you you never knew existed, what we just talked mm-hmm. about. All the stuff you ignored or overlooked before, it's in your face now. That part, we talked about that. Also, you change after having kids. You grow more and realize all the things you overlooked. That part. You really have to choose wisely who you have a child. Exactly. Really it's not do. even just a partner. Exactly. You're choosing your kid's parent. Yes, you exactly. are. Exactly. Because pe- I'm going to pause right there. That's another thing people don't understand. It's like, it's just because y'all look good together, prime example, mm-hmm. us. Like, not prime example, us. Well, <laughs> well, we we look good. We look amazing together. I was, but That's not just what we are, though. I, what I'm saying is two people can look good together and feel as though, oh, yeah, we'll be great parents. But when you don't take the time to, like, really see, because, like, prime example, you know you know how I am with kids. Mm-hmm. Kids gravitate towards me. I love children. I want all girls. And, yes, like, I don't know why. And like I just I just love little girls. It's like, I don't know. It's, it's different. It's just different than, like, I treat, I hate to say it. Well, no, I don't hate to say it. Um, I treat Lux way different than I treat Ashton. Mm-hmm. You know? And. It's I it's apparent like Lux and Nori that's my favorites you know that's my that's my godchild and my niece that like that's they're my favorites and it's like that's just how I'm wired you know so you get to see especially whenever even when when we first started babysitting Ash when he was first here you saw how I was well okay let me learn how to do this let me um let me help you with this oh he he's cranky and I know it's like the days you would babysit and like you had a lot going on or whatever and I had time I was like look you go take a nap I'm gonna watch him and then me and Ashton develop a different type of relationship you know so it's like. Most people don't even do what you said. Go mm-hmm. babysit. Go do X, Y, and Z with your partner to even see what they're like with kids. Yeah. Because a few days of cause there's another thing too. I don't know. You know what be the most confusing part? Hmm. And I saw it be getting on my nerve when people have kids with people that have kids, and they show you what type of parent they is. That part, and, and you, you still different. have kids with them. Mm-hmm. Like you think you special? No. No, they do. <laughs> I mean, what how, what other sense would that make? That's the only thing that would make it make sense to me. I just don't be understanding. It's like, you may be different from the person he had kids with, but a kid is still a kid. That kid that ain't part. got nothing to do with what y'all had going on. That right. child needs to be raised by both y'all because y'all both took the time that, to make the child. That part. That and part. yet, I just I just don't understand. Like, And yet you're going to have a child with that person again as if, it's you gonna didn't, change you something. You didn't see them with their previous child. Hey, bro, people be people live in a, in imaginary worlds. I can tell you that. Let me get back to these. Boy, these comments are flying in. Y'all engaged today. See why I be bringing here? Because y'all, we be having engagement when it was just me. Y'all don't like me, but that's fine. Oh, please, ain't like Brian. <laughs> uh, somebody said facts. My generation lays down with anyone, and it's sad. Your area down there is supposed to have value. That that part. That part. Some people never truly know themselves or knew themselves to start with. So when a baby comes, you're trying to figure out who you are as an individual, as a parent. That's that's another thing, that's, too. That's, Having a child a before process. you actually know who you are. That's a hard process. Ooh, child, that's, that's something else. Somebody said facts. It's a never-ending challenge. Some people do change. How long would you wait for a person to change? That's a good question. How long would I wait for a person to change? <laughs> Three months. Give me, give me, give me a little deeper. <clears throat> Why? Well, why? If, I'm gonna say why. If I'm putting, you can learn. I feel as though ninety days is a it's a, it's a good while to really see what a person is about. Mm-hmm. Like that, that's a long time. It's a long time. That's I just want to see reasoning behind it. Like, I mean, you could really go less time, honestly. But I mean, if this person is is somebody that I want to be with, or I just feel some type of connection with mm-hmm. blase, blase, blase. <laughs> then I feel like now nah, for like three months is too long. <laughs> but I, I mean, I get what you're saying. It's the it's the effort and it's the trying because even even within the because, change, yeah, the change comes know, with effort. Because I feel as though you know, as adults, we have different schedules, so you know, some things may not always line up. Mm-hmm. But you do have to see like the person showing the effort Mm -hmm. and that person may be showing effort. Let's say the first month Mm -hmm. or even the second month. But I feel as though once the third month kick around, I think it's kind of hard to hide certain Mm -hmm. things. Like you'll see if the effort still showing up right? the same way from day one. Because I I feel as though, I don't know your effort to want to talk to me and get to know me. It should be a parent. It should be a parent. Mm -hmm. It's me. It should still be apparent in the third month, right? Like I, 
I think that. I, no, I agree with that because, I mean, we've been dating for going on four years and I, I make it my mission almost every day to, like, not even just compliment you, but to, like, just be, to put in the effort every day. Mm-hmm. Because I, you already know how I feel about relationships. You got to wake up and choose your, your spouse every day. Yeah. If you don't, if you wake up and you just, like, F everything and F everybody else, it's like that shows. You know, like, that's an action. That's a choice. Yeah. You know, whether it be however you feeling, whatever, or I'm having to, it's your choice. You know, so I don't know. I, I definitely agree with what you're saying. Like that's that's real. That's real. How long you see? Oh, I would, well, I'm I'm half and half. I I do agree with three months, but I do feel like sometimes, like you said, some people's schedules don't line up. So mm-hmm. and it takes people. Prime example, it takes me a little bit longer to see things than you do. Mm-hmm. But like, I don't feel as though it would take me a year. Yeah, to I don't. See think, it. I don't think it would. But take I me feel a like you know either. to each his own a little bit. But I would say six months at the most. And that's, yeah. that's pushing it. That's really pushing it. And I think you have to, like, be... It depends on, like, what you are wanting out of that person at the time, too. Mm, mm, that's true. That's true. Because, like, I don't know. You're going to see different things in different people when you only want certain things. That's true. That's true. Mindset, perspective, ideologies. <clears throat> Big words. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 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 um, let me see. Some... uh. Yeah, we talked about that. We talked about that. She said, man, I'm anxious about raising my kid and my family members crossing the lines with them. S- same. Yeah. Same. Because, like, you know what I don't like? When I'm raising my, or if I have a way that I want to raise my children. And you tell them. And you t- and you tell them. <laughs> and then I, I can't. And they be like, I raise yes, five dude. kids. Yes, I know how dude. to raise kids. Oh, my <laughs> God. Like, I, I'm not going to say her name. I'm not going to put my friend out there like that because that's her story to tell. But I'll say this. She was going through something, and there was a clear evident, like, she, her child is healthy. Like, she she feeds her child a specific type of way. That child is, that boy is, is huge. But, like, he's healthy huge and tall, like, smart, all of that. She, she takes her time with her child, and he's on a specific type of diet. Mm-hmm. And he went somewhere, and somebody didn't really care for that and did it their way. And it was apparent because whenever you go back to check the book sack, you know, when you pick a child up, okay, well, I left him with snacks. Did that throw? Okay, mm-hmm. none of these things are touched. What did my child consume? And it's different with kids because, you know, if you're feeding your child a actual diet, an actual, not even a diet, but I mean... But they're like, on a routine. They're on a routine. Yeah. Like, you have to, there's a way you have to introduce food to them. Yes. You can't just give them Yes, because what if my child different. got a sensitive stomach? Yeah, so it's like, I just think it's a respect thing. And I think family in general, mm-hmm. have a hard time respecting boundaries. It's that familiarity. It's like, oh, I know you. I know the child is like, yeah. yeah. Like, I'm not going to do nothing to hurt your child, but I told you what I didn't want you to do. See you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's like, is, was it that hard? Like, like yeah. I ain't saying you can't discipline or whatever this that third. Just don't feed feed this my child this. I, I sent them with everything they're going to need. Which is why I would prefer to have my kids when I could have the most absolute that time part. with them. <laughs> that part. And if y'all liking what we talking about, I, f- I forgot to do this. If y'all liking what we talking about in the podcast and everything, y'all tap that screen and let the uh, let the bar fill up and you can stop. But also go to the YouTube. Please, subs- I'm trying to get to a thousand subs on there, y'all. Please go to the YouTube and subscribe because... Get them to 1K, y'all. Yeah, please. Because, like, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to take this stuff to the next level. Y'all gonna see. But, um, let's see. Somebody put, uh, some people truly rush things uh, way too much. And a lot of times it doesn't work. People are scared to be alone. That's true. Yeah, I, I ain't gonna say her name, mm. but I feel like we both know exactly what I'm talking about. That gut is always in a relationship, <laughs> yeah. always in a relationship, and, it, and that's that's not that's not healthy because you need time to heal from people. I don't think people actually want to heal, right? Because now you got to face yourself. Yeah, you got to like, really feel. Well, I don't want to face me. I didn't see me. I don't want, and that's scary. That's that's a bad thing. That's a no, very bad place to be. It is because what they don't realize is that. Through all these relationships, you are constantly changing. That part. And not even realizing the change that you are making. I feel like the crisis comes too whenever it's like, say they do glance for a second and they haven't been realizing that they've been changing throughout the relationships Mm -hmm. and then it's like, who am I? No, and and that's the question. Who am I? And you have to really take a deep dive instead of them three relationships back where you could have just been like, Mm -hmm. okay, you know. I need to work on X, Y, and Z. Mm Mm-hmm. I got some things I need to do before I step foot in my next relationship. but And that's for everybody. I feel like everybody should be checking on themselves. I think so, too. And it's like, but instead, you know, you jump to the next one because you didn't want to be alone. And, you know, it's a, it's a repeated cycle. It's a snowball effect. It's a repeated cycle. <laughs> I have to crack my back. Uh, let's see. 
that's an that's an ego thing. Thinking them being with you will yield a different result. Result that's insanity. I had talked about that a few episodes ago. To do the same thing over and over again and expect a different result is y'all can go look it up. It's literally the definition of insanity. Can't be doing that. What if the change is something deeply rooted, like an attachment wound? Hmm. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to see how, how we can make that make sense. Deeply rooted, like an attachment. like an attachment wound. So, like, I guess they're attached to the person. So they're deeply rooted to a purse to the person. Or maybe, may what? Well, yeah, but I feel like the attachment wound can be from like them dealing with hurt in times past. So and that person showing them a little something of mm-hmm. what they needed mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. fix one thing. Mm-hmm. But it feels like even even. But if it feels like they have done so much. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's how we're perceiving. If we're wrong, let us know. But that's how that's how we're per- we're perceiving it. I think I don't know for sure. Uh, let's see. I mean, we had our we we're on our phones daily, so I mean, a simple text takes seconds. That part she it was really refer- I know I already know what they were referring to. Back to the um getting to know somebody and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. That part. Now, granted, that was one of our hurdles because you yeah, was never like on your you still not on your phone. Like I don't. That. Well, I don't, if you call me, I'm gonna pick up. Now you do. <laughs> Now you do, but no, but I, but I get it though. That's just, that's just not you. Like I'm, I work through technology in my phone. So like, even if I'm not on my phone, my everything synced to my computer. So it's like, I'll see notifications. I'm on it. Her, she'll be building something or destroying something or creating something. And that phone is at, at her mama house. Like it, I don't know. It, she answers now. I'm not attached to my phone. You're not, you're really not. I wouldn't be either if I wouldn't have all this stuff to do, but I, I'd be working through my phone. Um, Sending your kid away with your family for just a couple of days can ruin all your progress. That, that part. Yeah. Cause I can only imagine what, you know, who went through whenever she sent him over there and mm-hmm. he came back. Like, cause you know, he's, he already has like eczema in a, in yeah. a, in a sensitive stomach. So like, mm-hmm. I wonder what that was like, because in the moment it's like, Oh yeah, snacks and blah, I'm blah, blah, blah. Sure it was hella annoying. Mm-hmm. I would have been hella annoyed. I would have been mad. Oh man. We got, we got a, not only we throwing hands, but I'm like I'm I'm at your neck at this point because it's just disrespectful. It's yeah. very disrespectful. Especially if I told you. The three months thing, like a serious or anxious attachment. I'm confused. Three month thing, serious or anxious attachment. MK, you might want to reword that because I ain't gonna lie. I don't know what she's talking well, about. I think she's talking about when I said three months. How long you was with a person? But that was to change. Though. I don't see how that ties with uh, like a secure or anxious attachment. I don't see how that would tie to that. Uh. Yeah, just I about to just reword it. We just a little lost. Um, family can be very toxic and dysfunctional at times, for real. And at the same time, at that prime example, mm, I'm gonna be quiet. Prime example, I'm gonna be quiet. I'm gonna be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to dive into some stuff <laughs> that I, that I'm just not gonna talk about on camera. That's really getting on my nerves right now. But you know, yeah, family. I don't know. I feel as though family get too comfortable. Yeah. Because you still need, like, there's still boundaries. You still have to have boundaries. But I don't think they understand that. Well, my, my like, bad. They have, you still have to respect boundaries. That's what I should have said. Yeah. Still, you still have to respect boundaries. Because it gets to a point to where it's like, y'all doing too much. And I'm telling you, you're doing too much. And you're not listening. Yeah. And then y'all look at me crazy. No, whenever, because in it, it's the statement that gets on my nerve is like, you're supposed to love and accept your family just as they come. I'm lies. Like, lies. I'm like, Cause y'all wouldn't even do. It. Let's be honest, they're not gonna do that for you. I, look, I don't care if you're gonna do it for me, but it's like, at the same time, it's like, just don't do it. Right? Don't be disrespectful. <laughs> just, just, don't be that person. Just don't do it. I like, cause the way I look at it, it's like, if you love me, and respect me, you gonna respect what I'm saying. That part. Mm-hmm. I shouldn't have to. I shouldn't, I shouldn't have, have to, to tell reinforce you, myself every time. I shouldn't time. Have to tell you ten times how I feel about something for you to actually be like, oh. I think that's how she feel. Hmm? And you still don't get it. Oh, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Oh, man. Hope before we go too far. Y'all don't, but she said, uh, secure our anxious attachments. What if it's a deep attachment style wound? I still don't really know what you're asking this, to be honest with you. Let me see. But yeah, yeah I, I don't want to raise my kid the same way my family raised me. Family members don't know boundaries either. Nah, I, I agree. I agree. Because like... Why, like, I, it's not that hard. 
it's really not that hard when you really think about it. Mm, Either I, you I, rock with how I'm doing things or you don't, and we don't we don't have to rock with each other. I think for some people it must be apparently hard because they still do it. Man, it's you know, you wanna know how I know that that could be some food. Well, just based off of how most people was raised, it's like you have friends that would respect you and go harder for you than said family members. Yeah. And that's because the only difference is they took the time to learn to you. learn you and mm-hmm. respect you. Yeah. Cause just because we feel like don't get me wrong, I family under- be automatically thinking they that, know you. That part. Oh, you such and such daughter. I, I've been seeing you since a child, but you don't know me on that level. Yeah, we don't talk like, like that. You don't know me. You know what my <laughs> what my parents make. You know, parents are messing with. They may be telling you. You still don't know but me. But you still exactly <laughs> take the time to come talk to me, please. Before we before we have a problem, problem. If your whole existence of me is through another person, you don't. You know don't me. know me, <laughs> and you're not trying to know me. Why are you okay with that? Is the, is the better question. Why do you think you know me is the question. Uh, like, I yeah. don't know you. As y'all can see, we both some uh <laughs> we both some fiery people. <laughs> Hard to raise a child in a family that has a power struggle and don't allow children to be free. Child st- <laughs> I'm, a, I'm not going I'm going to be quiet. Why, why are you going to be quiet? No, cuz I'm th- if Talk, I I'm going to disrespect some people on this live if I say what I want to say what and you I'm not say, I'm not Brian? I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. Oh. No. Nah. So yeah. that's gonna start. So we already, you know, the family already going through some stuff right now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let that be. Ain't gonna say it. We're gonna answer two more questions. Uh two more questions off the uh the poll. And if y'all got some more questions, then we're gonna wrap it up because I just realized it's almost five o'clock. Oh, we're gonna have follow up. A while. A while. Um let's see. I'm gonna skip that question. That question no. Oh Lord, what is something that Brian does that you wish he didn't? Get on my nerves. <laughs> <laughs> that has been the episode, y'all. <laughs> I'm sick of you. <laughs> um, some I wish you didn't do that. You do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I wish you would stop acting like the bed is so hard to make up. Mm. What? You acting like you said all them pillows. You said the way I do to make up the bed is so. Oh, hard. you mean the way I do it? Uh-huh. I was about to say. I was like, I don't know. My stuff is just like nitpicky because I don't have like some like major that I can think of. It takes it takes this girl fifty six steps to make up the bed in the it's way she wants to do it. Steps. It's a lot. It of takes steps. him fifty six steps. It's a lot of steps. He don't learn how to do I it. I figured it out the last time, and it took a, it took yeah, a while. He still didn't do it. I got it. Like she got like a you got to literally bust out the Pythagorean theorem to That's figure out how she want to tuck the thing a certain type of way. All you do is it, fold it. It's a fold. <laughs> I don't know about all that. I look. I am a simple person. A very simple person. I come from. Bro, whenever we first started dating, all I had was a comforter. That was it. A body. That was it. <laughs> you had a comforter and some sheets. And a body pillow and a satin pillow. That's it. That's all you get on my bed. With a, and then we broke the headboard. You but that's a, that, broke but that, the bed. That bed was broken. No, it was not. Right no, it was not. We we finished that. Anyways. It's a, um, finish. You see, you started. You started breaking it first. It was already, the, the break was already there. <laughs> Thank you. But it don't take me fifty six steps to make up the, and then I'm now it's just like, oh Moss, what's up, Moss? Moss is in the building. Hey, Moss. But um, yeah, it don't it don't take me it don't it don't no. Nah. But I, I'm I'm doing better. I tried. Yeah, you, you I tried. tried. You tried. She's not about to make you it sound tried. like I, I'm not trying. I, I tried. You tried that one time. Yes, you did. But in most cases, <laughs> whenever I would or would have the opportunity to make the bed, I am. She's still in it. You know what the funny thing was? When we started dating, I was there so much. I just started making up your bed. I, I was the one that made up your bed. You you see and you spoiled me. That's what it is. Oh, be quiet. You, you spoiled me. That's, be that's what quiet. happened. quiet. <laughs> yeah, when we first started dating, yeah, you really you really did. But that's because, see, you, you took ownership quick. Because, like, no, you because did. Yes, I you like, did. I like a space a certain way if I'm in it. Exactly. You took ownership <laughs> of my space. And like, because uh, when I was in an apartment at the time, it was me and two of my friends. So we had like a three bedroom apartment and I missed that closet so much. That was closet. like, I had the biggest, most beautiful walk-in closet. But, it was um, okay, but it was big. I, I loved it. I could have put all this gear right here. All that stuff was in there. And I had a whole bunch of space. We have different opinions on a beautiful closet. Anyways, <laughs> I had a, I had a nice, uh, I had a nice closet and it got to the point to where like, it was your side of the closet, my side of the closet, and then like yep. we rearranged like everything, and like I would come back and like the body pillows flushed out, the tapestry was here and there, like she and as, we moved the bed around. Yeah, yeah. 
It was nice. It was you nice. did a good job. It was nice. I love you too. I know that's that's just love. I know. Mm-hmm. Somebody said, "Oh, this has got to be a question for you." Cause I know they're not looking at my hair. <laughs> How long have you been growing your locks? Um. Well, actually, growing my locks five years, but I was natural before I started my locks for about four years. Mm-hmm. So that's the amber I didn't get to meet. I didn't get to meet her. I met you can't yeah, you came locked up. And your hair was pretty long by the time we had we had started dating too. It was it was like it was a bob. It was a bob. Yeah, somewhere right there. Yeah. And then I remember that phase you went through whenever it was like getting long but it wasn't long yet. And you were trying to do all these styles. It was you kept an getting, annoying Yeah, you kept lint. getting frustrated. It was an annoying lint. And now nah, she just be like, I'm gonna cut it off. I'm gonna do this. I'll be like, oh, all right, we're gonna see. I just I just tie it up not into a bob. Whenever I'm feeling the very thing you was running from. No, I wasn't running from the bob. The bob. I was running the bob. (laughs) (laughs) I was running from like that awkward length. Like it's not a bob, but it's not like too long yet. So Mm -hmm. it's a weird length. I mean, I feel, I feel it, I feel it. But we about to, y'all. We about to wrap it up. It's almost five o'clock. We, I'm never on this thing this long. I look and we and look. We got the crazy part is we got like one, two. Oh, you said no to those. We got like five more, que- five, six more questions left. Catch us on the part two because I'm just thinking about the process of me having to edit this in the next 12 hours. That's going to be a lot. But y'all, the closing remarks. Uh, well, I'm going to let you close out whatever you want to say. Down. I'm going to say what I got. Close out? No, no, no. I mean, oh. if, unless you don't want to. I'll just close it out. Thank y'all for y'all questions. <laughs> Thank y'all for listening. And I'll be back. <laughs> so, y'all, we've been migrating things to the YouTube. <laughs> So please, y'all, please go to the YouTube, go subscribe. It's Coach Brian on every single platform you can think of. You can't miss it. Either it's going to be a red logo or you're going to see my big old head. Y'all, please go subscribe to the YouTube. The link is in my bio. All you got to do is scroll down. Go subscribe to my YouTube. Go subscribe to my YouTube. Go subscribe to my YouTube. And all other episodes y'all not caught up on, y'all go back and look. And we uh we go live. Well, I go live because she she's not going to be on here every day. But um, but we typically go live every day at 3.15 Central Standard Time. So I don't know what time that is for y'all. I don't know where y'all are from, who's watching what right now. But 3.15 Central Standard Time is when I go live Monday through Thursday. And we're going to see. So far, so good. But I ain't going to lie to y'all. Once I get to a certain part on YouTube, y'all going to have to catch me on YouTube. Because YouTube has been showing crazy love. It ain't even been 30 days. Oh, thank you for... Oh, we almost to 10,000 10, likes. Give me the 10,000 before we uh before boop, we get off. Thank you, MK. You, you're such a sweetheart. But um, I was about to say, yeah, it ain't even been 30... It ain't even been 29, 28, 30 days on YouTube. And we already almost at like 1,000 subscribers. And we have... We almost had 100,000 views on the few videos that I've already posted. Y'all, I like... And if you up in here and you're somebody that already follows me, we about to hit uh, ten thousand likes. Um, and when if you up in me, if you up in here and you're somebody that's already following me on, on YouTube and stuff like that, thank y'all, like for real, because y'all know I take time to like really edit these videos and to like put. And that's another thing too. You're gonna get content on my YouTube that you're not getting on here. You're, you're gonna get stuff on the, like the seven minute videos, like me really going in on like, okay, what is the type of foods you eat say about you? What you know, what your personality says about this? Like, you're not getting that on TikTok. And if you miss some, you can just always go back and watch it because TikTok, mm-hmm. y'all know y'all not gonna be up in here trying to trying to watch no seven minute video on the mm-hmm. TikTok. Yes, it's not the platform not built for that. Mm-hmm. So just please go to my YouTube. Oh, Ray, Raven just got hold on. Ray just came up in here. Raven. Am I hey. tripping? Yup. Yeah, that's already. What's up, Raven? You, son, you missed one of the best episodes. But it's, it's okay. It's gonna be it's up. Okay. It's, it's gonna okay. be up. I actually, I'm gonna edit this. I'm gonna edit this one today if it renders. Mm-hmm. If it renders in time. If not, I'm gonna have it about by, by. Ooh, I lie. I lie. It's gonna be up by Friday because I just remember the schedule that I made Saturday. Mm-hmm. So it's gonna be up <laughs> by Friday. I'm gonna say that. But um, y'all, once again, please subscribe. Y'all, please go to the YouTube. We love y'all. We appreciate y'all. And we really trying to take this to the next level because I want my platform to, I know I'm a holistic coach and trainer, but I want to show you guys the full spectrum of holistic. Holistic doesn't just have to do with herbs. It doesn't just have to do with healing the body. You have to have a holistic relationship. It's a lifestyle. It, <laughs> it really is. You know, so it's like, if you're, if y'all not walking into the, into these things, like that's what I'm here for. That's what we're here for. And this has been another episode of a and Conversation. So see y'all way out of it. Adios. Y'all be good, man. Praise God. Thank you.